to the fourth edition of Healing School 24. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge our Pastor Lisa. That was a beautiful song, Pastor Lisa. I appreciate it so much. That song has always ministered to me. You know, I first heard it on Benny Hinn, and I love to hear that. And you know, he is a healing Jesus, and he has never passed away. You know, he's an eternal God, so if he's ever done one something once, he has to do it for always. Also, if you notice, we're in a different set. This is our Shady Grove Table Talk set, and I'm so excited that soon we'll all be back together and we'll be bringing you some new and exciting interviews, uh, and I'm, I'm waiting for that. Um, but today we're going to start on healing again. I think this is a very important subject because if you're not healed, <laughs> you're not happy, right? And I've been, I've been sick and I've been well, and well is better. And we've been teaching out of Charles Count's book, God's Creation, uh, Creative Power. And uh, we finished up that. And so today I'm going to start with uh, a book by Gloria Copeland, uh, Jesus Healed Them All. And you know, y'all heard me talk about the last time we were together, you heard me talk about... Um, about the the show that I had been watching, and where they portrayed Jesus as um, a young one of his young followers was killed by a Roman soldier, and he just turns around and walks off when the man is pleading with him to heal her, and that bothered me so much because I know the Jesus whom I serve, and the Jesus I serve would have never left someone lying on the ground to die. 
and especially turn around and walk off. Now, Jesus doesn't have to make you sick to get your attention. Jesus doesn't have to let someone die to bring someone else to him. There was one man that died, and he died for the salvation and the redemption of us all, and that was Jesus Christ. And if the Son of God is not enough to die for you on the cross, then somebody else is born here that it is born of human flesh. They're not going to do anything but grieve you and bring you sorrow. Now, if you've got a loved one that's gone on, and they were born again, then you've got the blessed hope that you're going to be with them again. I know that my grandmother has went on and my pop has gone on, but they were both born again, washed in the blood. So I know that there's coming a day, and it doesn't look like it's going to be very long, that we're going to be called up with him and we'll all be reunited together with him. So the word says that God wants you well. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him to be healed of their diseases. And they were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went out virtue of him and healed them all. Can we say all? Can we say all oh. together? He healed them all. That's in Luke 6, 17 through 19. Now you notice here that the word says that they were healed of all of their diseases and even those who were vexed with unclean spirits. Well, now, if someone is demon-possessed, and I do believe that people can be demon-possessed, do I believe a Christian can? I believe they can be oppressed because a demon can't live where the Holy Ghost lives. But Jesus died for that as well. He said, you remember when he cast out the demon um, of the man of Gadaree? Well, he said the things that he did, we would do also and more so than he did. So I know that he's given us the power in his name that we can cast out devils as well as lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, for 30 years now, I've been teaching about the word shall. The word shall is the strongest word in the English language because it, it doesn't turn. If you say something shall be, it shall be. And the word says that if you, we lay hands, it says if there's any sick among you, come to the elders of the church, have them lay hands on you, and you shall be made whole. Well, that's the word shall. It is God's will for you to be healed, but your faith cannot operate beyond your knowledge of God's word. The word says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. In the physical realm, this is literally true. The bodies of born begin believers are being destroyed because they do not know what their rights are. They do not have the knowledge of God's word that it is God's will to heal them. Now, when people are asked if they can pray for me, the first thing I always say is pray the word. As long as you pray the word, because I know what God's will is concerning healing or concerning prosperity. God wants his people healed. He wants his people happy and blessed and well. If you don't have the wealth in your hands, how are you going to maintain the church? Alabama Power don't give us free electric electricity. Mm. You got to have money to pay them. Well, churches do too. And if believers don't have the money and all the sinners have the money or all the lost people that don't know about Jesus, who's going to support the gospel? It says, how can they be saved unless someone sent? You have to have feet to go forth and march forth and carry the word of God. It says... Um, Many die young, even though it is not God's will. God said, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Exodus 23, 25 through 26. He says in Psalms 91, 16, with long life. I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. It is not the will of God for you to die young. It is the will of God for you to live long on the earth without sickness in your midst and to live satisfied. 
What good does it do someone to live a long life if you're not happy and satisfied? What good does it do if you have to take a, a, a go to the doctor every day just to maintain your uh, way of living here? God said that he would give us a long and satisfied life. Healing is not just a New Testament blessing. God has always provided healing for the obedient. Psalms 103, 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Now, I was teaching um, on a Wednesday night not long ago, and I was telling the, the congregation, I said, um, Pastor Randy, he, he blesses us and lets us all have a turn at preaching on Wednesday nights. And now we do a Sunday night uh, twice a month. And he's very generous and he lets yes. us come forth and, and bring the word. And um, I was teaching on this Wednesday night and I was telling everybody, I said, who all here has a job? Some people raised their hands. Some people were blessed not to have to raise their hand. But uh, I said, who has benefits with your job? And I said, well, you have benefits in the family of God as well. And it's Psalms 103. You need to learn this. You need to know. I bet you all know what your deductions are from your insurance. When you go to the doctor, you know what you have to pay, what your part is. Why? Because you know what your benefits provide. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of God. Psalms 103, 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And that's your mind. You've got to rem remember. You've got to remind yourself. Refresh yourself. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Many have forgotten God's benefits for the healing for their bodies. If you had been taught that it's God's will to heal you in the same way you've been taught it was God's will to save you. Now, why is it? That we can believe that God can save our soul from eternal damnation. But we can't believe that it's God's will to heal us. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, he not only died for your sins, but he died for, for the, the sickness and disease. How did sickness and disease get into this world? It was when uh, uh, Adam bowed his knee to Satan. He bowed his knee to an inferior being because you are made lower, a little lower than the angels. That word angels means Elohim. That means you were made a little lower than God. That means you have authority over the angels. Why else would the word say that the, the angels are waiting, the creation is waiting for the sons of God to reveal themselves? You have to give your angels instructions every day. You've got to make sure there's a peaceful atmosphere for your angels to operate in. And when we get in strife like Last night we had an episode that uh, me and my husband was out shopping and we had something happen and I pray I laid over his car and I was praying in the spirit over his car but nothing happened and but you know what I was in so much strife I was so angry how did I expect my angels to operate on my behalf so I text the prayer team. And I said, y'all pray, pray. Because I knew what state of mind that I was in at that time. You see, it, we've got to keep ourselves in the confines of the word of God for the word to operate in us and on us and work for us. Amen? Amen. Let's see. Um, Jesus bore your sicknesses and carried your diseases at the same time that he died on the cross for your salvation. You are just as free from sickness and disease as you are from sin. You should be as quick to refuse sickness and disease in your body as you refuse sin. To live free from sickness, you must plant the word of God concerning your health and your healing in your heart. How do you do that? What, how does the word come? How does faith come? By hearing. And hearing what? By the, by the word, word of God. God. And hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we've got to plant the word of God in us. You've got to get up with it on your lips. You've got to go to bed with it on your mind. Yesterday, uh, we had to uh, have a vehicle towed to our house. And I rode with my daughter and her husband. And, and my husband 
rode with the tow man that was towing the car. And he said after everything that had happened that night, all he could do was talk to him about Jesus. Praise God. That's good. Tell him about our church. The man said, he said, well, you know, I quit going to church. He said, because I got hurt in church. And you'll hear that more than anything in the world. But you can't let the mistakes of others keep you out of the presence of God. Amen. You need a community that you can be with. You, We're at the end. You've got to find the tribe that you're supposed to be with. Right. And when this man was talking to my husband, he told him, he said, I know a church that will accept you. He said, I know a church that'll love you. And he said, it's Shady Grove in Mount Olive. He said, they'll accept you and they'll welcome you in. And so as far as I know, the man's planning on visiting the church. But see, you got to choose every opportunity to show Jesus to a lost and dying world. Now, this man may have been born again. I don't know. He was in church. He got hurt in church. But we can't let that, we can't let mistakes of the others make us grow cold. We have to, when you get hurt, you got to push forward and you got to get closer. I know. I hid away one time when I got hurt for four years. I, I just decided, hey, if I'm away from everybody, nobody can ever hurt me again. But all it did was make me pull back. I wasn't operating in my call. The anointing that God places on your life is without recall or repentance. If he's once anointed you, it's like my mother said, if the anointing is ever there, it never leaves. It's there. I had a prayer cloth that the prayer team prayed uh, for me. Um, I think it was Tuesday night. And I have wore it and I change places with it. I'll put it here. I'll put it there, you know. I'll put it on my ear, put it on my face. Because I thought about what my mother said. Wherever the anointing has ever been, it is still there. Now, God might move you in a different direction with that anointing. But the anointing is still there. It's still true. That's right. Uh, the Bible says that the word is the incorruptible seed. You are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. First Peter 1 and 23. You are healed the same way by the incorruptible means that the seed cannot be destroyed. The seed cannot be destroyed. You'll have crops fail, but the seed of God is forevermore. It's everlasting. Once that seed has been planted, it's planted. It's not coming back. The word says that whatever he speaks will not return void unto him. Satan cannot stop the power of the word of God. She says, uh, I can prove that to you with salvation. Once you hear the word and decide to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, there is no power that can stop the new birth from taking place in your spirit. No devil in hell can stop you from being born again. Mm -hmm. If he could stop you, there'd be nobody born again right now because he knows his days are numbered. I remember an old Carmen song that said, when the devil tries to remind you of your past, you remind him of his future. And what is his future? He has a devil's hell waiting on him with a lake of fire where he'll be cast in where he can't torment anybody any longer. And what have you got waiting on you? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, in my father's house, there's many rooms. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. But Jesus himself has gone to prepare that place for you. I get excited. The pastor asked me this morning to open up uh, to receive the offering. And I almost started started preaching, I told mother, I said, what does he expect when he asks an evangelist to, to receive the offering? I can't help myself. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. And what somebody starts me on the word of God, I cannot help it. Can I get amen? Amen. 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 It's just like you. When you open your mouth to sing, what comes out? But the beautiful word of God. You can't help yourself. Praise God. Men cannot spoil the incorruptible seed. It says, um, 
It's the same way for healing. You receive everything from the Lord in the same way by faith. Results come when you hear the word, receive it, and act on it. You have to put the word in and put the word in. And you say, well, I put the word in and it didn't work for me. It's not because the word didn't work. I mean, I'm not telling. I, I, there's many things I've prayed about that I didn't see the outcome like I wanted it to be. But that doesn't mean God failed. That doesn't mean his word failed because you, we just read that his word is the incorruptible seed. And once that seed has been planted, it will accomplish that which it is sent to. Results come when you hear the word, receive it, and act on it. You receive healing exactly the way you received the new birth. By hearing the word, by believing the word, enough to act on it. You have to put the supernatural seed of the word of God in your heart, plant it, and it will grow, and it will produce fruit. Have y'all ever thrown out some seed out in the yard? Say, um, we had a compost in a big... Um, it was like a big five gallon drum. And when we would have watermelon and stuff like that, we would throw it out there in that compost heap. And uh, the next year, I'm not kidding you, the next year, these vines had grown out of that barrel and there was little watermelons on it about that big. I ate one of the cucumbers off of it, but it just kind of grossed me out and I wouldn't let myself eat anymore. It was the same fruit as any other fruit, but it was in that compost heap and I thought, hmm. But anyway, when you throw a seed out and it's planted in fertile ground, it will produce a harvest for you. It's the same way I knew a man and he was, uh, he was born again. But he was oppressed by I don't know how many devils. And how this happened is he would come in from work or wherever he had been. And he said the way he relaxed was watching horror movies. And he would fill himself with those horror movies until it took over him. Mm -hmm. And he had to be delivered from them. It's the same way with fear. There was a time I was so obsessed with fear, oppressed with fear. I had to have hands laid on me mm -hmm. because I couldn't even drive. You remember that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even drive. People would have to come and get me and my kids and take us to church because I was so fearful to drive. Mm -hmm. But once I was delivered from that, and I still, I make myself do things now. Okay. I'm... I, I drove somewhere the other day and, and Fred was with me, my husband, and I drove and I, I didn't even mention him getting over in the driver's seat. I deliberately drove to where we were going because, you know, you don't need to be bound up with anything that hinders you in any way. It's, it's horrible to be fearful. Mm -hmm. I, my little niece said one time when she was little, she said, it's not fun to be afraid. And That's it's right. not. That's right. It's not afraid. To, uh, it's not fun to be afraid and to be in fear. But you know, nine times out of 10, the things the enemy's whispering in your ear is a lie. Because fear is false evidence appearing real. Amen. Anything that tries to overshadow the word of God is not the truth. This is the only truth that there is, is the word of God. There's nothing else you can stand on, y'all. Because nothing else is true. You've got facts in this world, but they're not truth. Just because a fact says this way, it's not the truth that the word says this way. Amen. Amen. Miracles and the healing power of God are just available to now as when Jesus walked the earth. You can believe that God heals today. Miracles have never passed away. Some people just quit believing. It takes an act of faith to receive from God. She goes on to say, there was a time in my life when I knew that healing was real and that God was healing people, but I didn't know if it was God's will to heal me. Just believe in healing. Just believe that it is God's will to heal you. You have to believe that healing is yours. Let's say that. Healing, healing is, is mine. mine. 
Jesus died for that. You know, that's part of yes. the redemption of God. He took those stripes on his back for you and for me. And it's up to us to believe that and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Too many of us live below what God wants us to. Yeah. Too many of us, we don't operate in the things of God because why? You've been taught different things. It says there's one thing that makes God's word of no effect. Does anybody know? It's the traditions of men. The traditions of men is the only thing that can make God's word of no effect. Why? Because you believe those traditions more than you believe the word of God. Mm -hmm. You have to believe the word over That's anything right. you've been taught. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I didn't grow up Pentecostal. I grew up Baptist. We didn't know about speaking in tongues and the uh, gifts of the Spirit. But my grandmother and my mother knew enough to teach us. We don't know about those things, but we'll not make light of it. That's what Mama always said. We'll not make light of it. Why? Because she taught us to respect the things of God, as did my mother. We were always taught to be reverent when it came to the Word. And, you know, I can remember today I did something. I can always, you know, you know the voice of God. If you're a born-again believer, you know the voice of God. The Word plainly says, my people know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Well, last week, Mother heard it first. My husband was sitting in the back of the church, and she heard his voice. He was praying in the Spirit or saying amen or something. And Mother looked at me. She said, is that Fred? And I listened for a minute, and I said, it is. Why? Why did we know that without looking? Because we know his voice. Mm -hmm. And when he began to speak, I knew who that was. You know, uh, I can be in a in a store, and I can hear some. My kids are grown. All my kids are grown. I got grandkids. But I can hear somebody say, Mama. And I look around to see yes. who it is. Because I'm always looking for the children or the grandkids. And I'm blessed to have seven grandkids now, praise God. And it, it is a blessing. But my point being is, today, I was taught in church, you never turn around and look. Once you're seated, we weren't allowed to do that. You weren't allowed to turn around and look to see who was behind you or who was coming in. But I was looking for my husband because I heard his voice. I heard him praying in the Spirit. And I broke my own raisin i turned around to look to see who was back there now it was him because as i said i know his voice i'm trained my ears trained to know who's speaking to me amen amen it says it takes faith to receive from god and it does uh you have to believe healing belongs to me another tradition tells us that god gets the glory from christians being sick how many's ever heard that i remember how much time have we got? Have we got enough? You're at 24. Okay. Uh, I remember when I first got born again. Well, I got saved at 14. And I was I got saved in a Pentecostal church. A man laid hands on me and I hit the floor. I didn't know what was going on. So you know I didn't fake it because I didn't know to. I hit the floor because the power of God was on this man. And I hit the floor and, and I was born again. I gave my life to Jesus. But you know, uh, as a teenager, it doesn't matter how you know how to live. Sometimes we do things we shouldn't do. But when I got up older and I began to seek seeking God with all my heart, there was a woman that had a child that was born a certain way. And everybody had laid hands on the baby and prayed over it. But she's a grown woman now. She's still in that same position. And this is what that pastor told that woman. And I'm not talking against a pastor. He just didn't know. He said, well, if God doesn't heal her here, he'll heal her in heaven. And I said, that doesn't even make sense. I said, everybody's healed in heaven. God wants you well here. God wants you well now. And this woman proceeds to tell me, well, I know their heart. I said, no, you don't. I said, you don't know their heart. You know what I, you perceive of me. You don't know me when I'm at home. You don't know me when I'm by myself. You don't know in the middle of the night when the enemy tries to come and talk to you and talk you out of God's promises. We don't know each other like that. That's between you and God. 
your heart is. Mm -hmm. You know, the word says that God, he knows the difference of the intents of our, uh, of the thoughts of our mind and the intents of our heart. And yes, I believe this family wanted this baby well. Of course they did. But I don't know, I don't know why. I can't tell you why. But I can tell you it wasn't the word that fell. Well, it looks like I'm just about out of time. Listen, y'all. If there's anybody out there that's never asked, asked Jesus to come into their heart and be the Lord of their life, I'd like you to repeat that now. Those around me, if y'all repeat this after me. Father God, Father God, I come to you now. I come to you now. I ask you to cleanse me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me of all my sins. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. You are the Son of God. You are the Son that of God. you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. And raised up from the dead. And raised up from the dead. I receive that now. I receive that now. And I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus. That I am born again. That I am born again. And as you are seated, and as you are seated at the right hand of the Father. At the right hand of the Father. You have raised me up to sit with you. You have raised me up to sit with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, if you prayed that, then you are now part of the family. Welcome to the family of God. Mm -hmm. If you have any prayer requests or any needs, please feel free to email us at, at the church. Um, you can see when we post this video, there's places for comments. If you will put your prayer request on there, we meet every Tuesday night. And when we see those on Facebook, we'll pray over them right then. Yes. We don't wait till Tuesday night. Put them on there. If you don't have a church to go to, we have a church for you, and it's Shady Grove yes. Church in Mount Olive, Alabama. And this is the time I would look at my pastor and say, and what's that address? Because I don't know it, but if you can hear her, she's going to tell you now. 5535 Shady Grove Road, Mount Olive, Alabama. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So until next time, there'll be a fifth. There'll be a fifth part. You've been with Shady Grove Church. This is Healing School 2024, and we'll see you next time.